neighbor and say, this is the place. This is the place where God shows himself strong. This is the place where the devil gets off of my hind end. This is the place where God proves I'm his child. This is the place where the door opens for me. This is the place where the yoke is broken. This is the place where the enemy is destroyed. This is the place where I give my testimony. This is the place where the devil's back up. This is the place. Come on, we just want to magnify him and exalt him and lift him in this place. Come on, God, we make your name great. Anybody want to help us to lift him higher on today? Come on, he's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the honor. He's worthy of the glory. Come on and magnify him. Come on and bless our God. We give him all the glory. We magnify you, Jesus.
And I just want to encourage everybody, somebody right now, that hey, guess what? This is not the time uh, to fall back. Uh, this is the time to congratulate yourself, to pressure your way uh, in unusual moments. And I pro promise you, you'll look back one day and somebody will be jealous of you. Somebody will be half mad with you. Somebody will be jealous of what you have or how you possess your strength, maybe even your understanding. Right. And it all will come back through moments they'll say, guess what? Hey, when you was doing this, I was still seeking them. And I ain't really but, but, but if you're taking notes, this is the perfect time to take notes. You gotta do it. Um, you, you gotta do it. If I said you gotta do it, you gotta do it. These are the times you gotta take notes. Pull out your phone today. This is the day. Online family, make sure you grab uh, yourself uh, a pen, a pencil. Uh, uh, amen. If you old school, pull out your receipt. Amen. Right on the back of the receipt. Amen. All your all your new school leaders. You know you got an app in your phone. They come for free. Amen. Come for free. Amen. Just no section you can put in, in everything that you need. And I promise you, uh, I promise you, um, um, it, it, it'll be a blessing to you. So here's what I want to do. As a base scripture for all of us today, I want to also stand our feet right quick. I want to read this scripture. This scripture is going to be our base scripture for the duration of this series, but I want us just to read it together. Um, and I want um, all of us to go forward with it. Um, any y'all excited about some of the promises that God's going to reveal unto you this year? Anybody know that God promised you some stuff? I said this is a year. So for those of y'all who don't believe in Pastor Dozier and don't believe that I see God for real, I told everybody three years ago, this was way before pandemic, it was this year, it was, it was January, the first Sunday in 2020, we decided to go to Saturday and said this is going to be a year of change. We're talking about coronavirus. I knew that God, everybody said, what about money? What about this? I said, I'm telling you, it's going to be a year of change. Be ready for changes. And that's what happened 2020. Last year, I told y'all 2021. It was going to be a year recovery. And if I really told the real truth about some of the things that were recovered just in this church today and some people that are watching me online, guess what? I will be telling your testimony about God, how, how God recovered you. You was a mess. God recovered some people, recovered your thoughts, your mind. Some people came back home. Love came back to the house after mess ups. And God recovered it. It was some issues and pain. And God, I don't want to talk about that. I want to tell you. Some of y'all got church hurt and broke down and God put you in the right place. And God recovered you from some stuff. Now, this is the year. Please hear what I'm saying. This is the year of promise. Please see if it is good for somebody and bad for somebody else. It's a year of promise. There's some things that God promised you. He was watching you through 20, 20, 21. You see if he was going to book and abort your blessing. But you kept pressing. And now this is going to be the year he fulfills his promise. The second part for some of y'all is a year of promises because many of you may made promises and God told everybody you don't have to make a promise to me that means you don't have to have a wife or a husband to go to heaven you don't have to make promises to God but for many of you you made promises and this is the year he's going to demand it from you this is the year that the promise you made back in 2015 oh Lord you let me get out of this I promise this is going to be the year he says guess what talk is cheap now do it do it or die not for those of y'all who've been seeking God and God promised you some stuff. You were sitting around test driving stuff and looking at stuff you can't afford. He's going to bless you with what he promised you. So much y'all, he promised me. He promised me. So all you need to do this year is don't trip. Okay? Don't trip. All right, here we go. This is the scripture. Let's read it together. Y'all got it? Oh, here we go. Let's read scripture. He wants to say, read it together and say it like you mean it. Mean like I said, what does it say? Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with such so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset us. Wherefore, seeing we're compassed by such a great cloud of witnesses. A great cloud of witnesses is not just talking about people that are saved, even people who've gone on to be with the Lord. God said, we've got witnesses, mamas, daddies, grandmamas, granddaddies, that people who tried and true, who know, that can witness that, guess what? That in this life, if you're going to get the things from God, you got to lay aside every weight and the sin. Everybody say two different things. So, so, it ain't always sin that you're tripping over. Sometimes it's just wait. Wait from your parents. Wait from your job. Wait from your phone. Wait. That's so easily, if I say easily, beset us. Just for the while, look at my closest. say, stop tripping. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for our time together. God, I thank you for your presence, your power. God, I thank you for your work. Now, God, do it only you can do. God, hide me behind the sacredness of your cross so men might see more of you and less of me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Now, God, say this church, your Holy Ghost fire. Have your way in this place. We'll be so careful to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. We ask God in Jesus' name. So my shot is already done. Amen. All the way down to the city, I just holler. Stop tripping. Stop tripping.
stop tripping, stop tripping, stop tripping, stop tripping, stop tripping. Now my question to you today is, does anybody trip on purpose? You ever seen somebody trip? I know y'all, Pastor, I know I should be more spiritual, more, a lot more deeper saved with the Holy Ghost. Uh, but I still laugh at people that fall. Just pray for me. I, 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 you fall around me. I don't, I don't see if you're all right. But I'm always like, <laughs> you good? I said, well, because I know you, you just was moving a little fast, just trying to keep your little cute on. And, 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 and one cute wrong, you. And, 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 and I know you didn't mean to trip. Y'all ever seen somebody trip? Let me tell you what's tripping so far. Here's a word. Y'all catch it right now, y'all get it. Let me tell you why tripping is so difficult. Tripping, I'm not talking about trip. Tripping is, that's what I laugh at. Uh, you're tripping, you ain't really caught your balance yet, but you ain't, you ain't quite, you, you. I'm talking about, uh, I ain't talking about when you play it off. I already seen people do it all the time, they be, hey, 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 you know. Right, I ain't talking about the play, hey, what? Hold on, hold on, you know. I see you trip and be like, skip with it. Like you drop, you ain't drop nothing. Nah, I ain't talking about the alphabet. I'm talking about right in the moment of that, 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 that one, that part, that part right there, I laugh. Let me tell you why. Um, because you ain't walking, but you ain't fail. You just tripping. Are you hearing me? Um, if there's a song for somebody online, go back and read it. Go back and watch it online, YouTube. Uh, Pastor the Priest, he was preaching that day. You got to catch that dude that day. That day he said, don't make me throw up. He was talking about how God will throw up because many of us are not cold or we're not hot. We're lukewarm. We're in the tripping stage. Right. Um, I know that was going to get me. Oh, Lord, Pastor, there you go. So here's what I'm going to do today. Don't get mad at me. I'm going to try to go through a few things. I'm going to start with, I don't know how many I'm going to finish, uh, but I'm going to try to cover a lot of them. I'm going to talk about, uh, these are all things we have to stop, stop tripping in to get the promises of God. Everybody say, stop tripping to receive the promise from God. Okay, here we go. Um, let me find this first one. Um, I'm, going, I'm going to try not to bother everybody. I could give you all a lot of scriptures on it. I may finish these. Like I said, I might dive into these even more on Bible Lab, but right now I just want to uh, just jump right in. Um, the first one is one I always talk about, but I want to deal with it more. If I say unteachable spirit. Unteachable spirit. Mm, don't get mad at me. Unteachable spirit. Now listen, notice I didn't say an uh, unteachable uh, heart or unteachable mind. It's an unteachable spirit. These are things that you got to stop tripping over because these are many people. Many people struggle with this and they've never received the promises of God because uh, the only way you can activate the promise of God in your life is you have to activate your spirit. If I say activate your spirit, you got to activate your spirit. It won't come no other way. So what happens is God is a spirit. So uh, God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him spirit and truth. The problem with an unteachable spirit is uh, <laughs> you think you know everything. But your spirit lost. Because we can't teach your spirit nothing. So everybody thinks about things logical. They think about logical this. And they try to put everything in a logical form. You, you want some realistic answer. You want some kind of tangible goal that you can manifest in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It, life doesn't work like that. I've seen people try to say, guess what? Well, I'm going to want Christian mingle. And I'm going to put my profile like this. And I'm gonna, like, I see people lay out their whole life. I want my life like that. But the problem is you, you, you're never really going to receive the promises of God because you have an unteachable spirit. That means when it comes to the spirit, the things of the spirit, you quench the spirit. Spirit. You, you, you stiff arm God. You say, God, that's not real a big deal to me. And I see many people. Let me tell you the biggest problem. Here's the real biggest problem. The biggest problem is too many of you have been covered by the Holy Spirit. Let me say, what that means is there are things in your life that you clearly cannot explain that only the Spirit of God kept you from. Mistakes you made. Embarrassments that could have went worse. You were covered by the spirit, but now you try to go through life with an unteachable spirit. Here's what the Bible says. I'm gonna give you one little quick scripture and I'll move on. Y'all I see the mad faces. I see you online. Somebody don't click off. Read, 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 watch what the Bible says. It was it. My people, save people. Everybody say save people. Save people. Save people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. So you won't get the promises of God. God said, guess what? Since it don't mean nothing. Think about it for a second, y'all. 
Some of y'all uh, had new jobs, and you, you, go through, you go through two months of job training. Two months. Just to learn what they want you to do, and you still got to learn as you go. Uh, and you, you, you wouldn't learn it because you want to check. But, but, but who's going to who's gonna trust a supervisor that don't like you to keep your job? You will need the Spirit of God to step in. Right, right, right. And until you start allowing the Spirit of God to teach you, when I'm talking about the Spirit of God teach you, I'm not even talking about in a live or in a worship service. I'm talking about you driving down the road and the Spirit starts testing you, saying, Guess what? You shouldn't even be talking like that on the phone right now. Just go and stop that. Find something else to talk about. That's the Spirit of God trying to teach you. But here's the problem you want the blessings that comes through the Spirit of God. But when God tries to correct you and protect you, you, you step on it. That's quenching the Spirit. And so what happens is you continue to struggle. Because you don't have a you have an unteachable spirit. You come to worship. You set out time to come to worship. Set out time to pay attention to hear more from God. Not just me. I would tell y'all all the time. If you don't even heard this, let me tell you now. If you don't hear from God, leave. Click off. Because if God's a spirit, certainly when you clear your mind and your heart, put your phone, your your your, your social media to the side to hear from God, certainly the spirit of God ought to speak. If he's not speaking, I, I, I'll, I'll come in just to get the ball. Just to, you ain't coming just to talk to me. Right? So, the problem is this. is when you get so many distractions and distractions start feeding into your life and coming into your life. And so you done got bombarded down and you done got, you done, you done, you done got, you done got bamboozled. And now you, you, you quit to learn this. You want to learn about this. You want to talk about sports. You know, if you're a man, you, you learn about bundles and how your hair ought to be. You learn about Botox and you want to live now. You won't serve you. You know, you, you like, like, listen, you, you smarter than anybody, but your spirit is unteachable. And the Bible says, you, look, I didn't say this, y'all. The Bible says, my saved people are destroyed. Now, he's not talking about your soul, because it's on the way to heaven. But their dreams, their promises are destroyed because of lack of they don't They, they don't want to learn more about how to get it. Now, bootleg pastor, I ain't going to be a bootleg pastor. Shit. I ain't going to be a bootleg pastor. Let you think things just going to slide your way. Some kind of way, some kind of way, we think our blessing is going to come like an airplane. Say, come on in. Teachable spirit. Oh, man. Everybody say spirit. spirit. Now, the rest of that verse says, Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also. So, watch this. It wasn't that God didn't want to bless you, you rejected it. Y'all see that? Amen. So, I, I, I don't want you to learn more about me and learn more about church. I want you to get a teachable spirit. God, show me. Here's what the Bible means. I got a couple scriptures I give to you, but another scripture said, the Bible says, therefore be delighted in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. What that means is, he'll give you new desires. Here's how you know you might be saved. If I say, might be saved. It said it aloud. If I say, might be saved. Here's how you know you might be saved when God starts giving you new desires. When that spirit starts telling you, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're going to church. We're going to act like this. Somebody stop in the car. You say, come on, we can ready to go to worship. We can't we can be acting like this. I remember y'all, I should grow up at a time where we couldn't even get mad on Sunday. God said, I know y'all ain't doing all that fussing and fighting today on a Sunday. She was trying to tell me, you got to have some reverence. Now, I'm not telling you that it was all about that. What I'm trying to tell you is that, guess what? It, it, she was trying to train me to be open to the Spirit of God, to hear from God. I know, I know they won't hear me on that. They ain't like me, Lord. They don't like me. First thing I do, if you don't go trip, first thing you can't trip over this year. Everybody say can't trip. Can't trip. You can't trip over having a what? Unteachable spirit. Unteachable spirit. Unteachable spirit. Write this down. Take a picture of unteachable spirit. Second thing you got to honor right quick and I'll try to move fast. I promise you I'm not going to hold you too long. I'm going to do fast on this one. Is, uh, you got to do it. You're going to trip this year. Everybody say unmanaged time. Just let that sit there for a minute. Just let that sit right there. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I really ain't got to say nothing else. Like, I can just. Right? We ain't got to talk about nothing else, do we? we? I can just. Nobody? Like, that's good. That's good, like, by itself. Unmanaged time. Nobody still. No amens, no hallelujah, you know. I know where I'm at. I know where I'm at. So let me let me, let me come another way. Uh, and I, I need to say this clearly to everyone. If I say everyone, everyone, 
everyone got to understand that in these times in our lives, y'all understand, the worst thing you can do is unmanage the, the most valuable thing you have in life. So I know, let me come another way. Your job doesn't really like you. If you got somebody that like you at the job, that's cool. But the job doesn't really like you. I'm telling they like you. Uh, they, they sit you down at the interview um, and really ask you, how much is your time worth? Wait, my best they ask what time want me to do a job. They don't want you to do a job. They're going to figure out what they want you to do. They're asking you, how much of your time is worth you an hour? So here's what happens. They pay for your time. You get money. What are you going to do with money? You don't need money. You get money so you can pay for a house so you can spend what in it? Then you get money to pay for the phone. It ain't the money. They care about how much time you're going to spend on the phone. See, back in the day, uh, back in the day when I was growing up, uh, uh, you had to call out to seven. You had to call back seven because it was only free after seven. But then the world figured out that guess what? That's not the value. It ain't the phone. Now they give you the phone. Then they start talking to you for the time to use on the phone. Then they said, man, they ain't talking on the phone no more. Let's charge them for the, 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 the internet. Then uh, the internet said, guess what? Man, well, hold on, man. People now say, man, Facebook free. Instagram free. TikTok free. It ain't free. The advertising, they're paying for your time. And God is saying, you're going to keep missing your promises because you refuse to manage your time. Do you know when you die, depending on who you say you love, who you boot up with, he is the greatest part of your funeral, he's the greatest part of your ongoing service. When I get to read the venture, if I get to read talk about you, they get to say, guess what? Now listen, out of everybody in the world, he is who she spent her time with. That's what love is. Who you willing to, do you know why people get so mad, bust ones out of the car, slap fights with somebody? Because you wasted so much time. Please hear me, y'all. You got to stop tripping with managing your time. Now, there's an app I use for my daughter, um, this, this thing I use. Um, and so when I first gave a cell phone, I was worried about that. The time I felt like, man, everything I should try to sneak and steal magazine, everything I thought that was full of sin, you could get it with a click. Amen. It scared me, y'all. Stuff I had to sneak out with my uncle. Go to, with uncle, you go to store. Mama said, "One goes to the shoes, he leave. I had to go work. Like all the stuff I did to try to get to sin, you can get it out of click. Are you over eighteen? Yes, click like it. Like it just says yes. Right. I'm saying, man, I can't do this. I do it. So I start managing her. This app I use, and this app allows me to give her a set amount of time to use in it. And so uh, they say most humans uh, on the internet uh, average just three and a half hours. Most teenagers. Uh, uh, um, most adults are on the phone, on uh, social media, uh, on the internet, surfing, whatever it is, at least three hours, three and a half hours uh, every day. Three, 30 minutes, 10 minutes, 14 minutes, 8 minutes, right? Three hours in total a day. Teenagers are seven hours. Okay, I don't know if y'all understand this. Uh, it's 20, 24 hours in a day. Uh, eight of them, they at school. Usually, eight of them, they sleep. Yeah. That's 16. There are at least eight left. And seven of the hours you got left. Here's the problem. Those teenagers turn into adults. And now the teenagers who, who can't, can't, can't shake the phone, now they're a parent. Now they got kids. And now they're sending the kid, go in there and watch TV. Because you ain't got time. So you can waste time on your phone. And God is saying, I didn't allow you to live. 800,000 people have died in the last two years from flu or whatever. God allowed you to live to do what? To play with your phone? You got to manage your time better. Amen. You got to manage your time better. You got to find what you say, Lord, I, I, I even hook. It's a cell phone. I ain't telling you to do it. Your phone That's your phone. But you got to start saying, hold on. Maybe, maybe this hour, uh, I'm going to write down what I'm going to do different with the time I had last year. Because, Lord, if I was checking these sites, these sites didn't bless me last year. So maybe I'll try, like, I, I got to find a better way to manage my time. Maybe I ought to start or something. Maybe I ought to have somebody try to look at my time. What I'm saying is you got to manage your time. Do you know right now there's 168 hours in a, in a week? One, 68. My question is, what are you doing with the other 166? 
Because many of you can't commit the two hours at church. Somebody online, you logging off and on. I'll come back and see what he's saying. You know, he's talking pretty good and I'll come back and get you. If you can't focus, if I tell everybody, you better bring your snotty nose self to worship and just sit in somebody's corner because you can't trust your time with your phone. And then you miss your blessing. Then you call me. Then you want me to make time to pray. Yeah. Pastor Mike Brown just, I done got myself in a little situation, Pastor. Now I gotta make what? Because you didn't have none. The problem is, Pastor Doja's strength and power is limited. So you ought to make time for God, not me. Yeah. Unmanaged time. Please hear me. Most people, most people, please hear me. Most people don't spend enough time with God. That's it. It ain't that you don't love God. You don't spend no time with him. So when he go to talk to you, you don't know who he is. True story. Back in the day. Everybody say back in the day. Everybody say BC. BC. Phone went, hello, who this? You know who this is? Girl, you know I know this is. Stop playing. You always be want to play on the phone. Tell me who this is. Girl, you know I know this is. You better stop playing the phone. I don't play, I don't play with kids. Now I don't play. Why am I getting by? Why, why am I trying to get gangster? Why am I getting mad? Because I don't know what. But why don't I know who it is? I ain't spending enough. Many of you, it's not that God's not trying to talk to you. You don't know who's talking to you, your dog tripping, you on the TV, you looking at a meme saying, that's good. And God is saying, listen, spend some time with me so you know the difference. Then you won't hook up with that book of words, you won't make that mistake before, you won't gotta keep cussing for God, you won't keep falling to the same traps because you learn how to spend. Now, nah, that's God. If I say that's God, that's spirit. But we believe in worship and spirit and the truth is, many of you got dreams, you ain't putting no time towards your dream. If I follow you today, I ain't talking about what you watch somebody else doing. I'm saying, find out what you want to do for you. I'm tired of people saying, well, I'm watching this page and watching this page. How about we find out about you? How about we find out what, 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 what you're lacking? Let, let's work on some things with you. Man, right now, uh, one of the things that, if, if I really be honest, one of my biggest insecurities was, um, 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 I don't, I'm not, I'll not, so if I say, Pastor Dozier, don't knock social media. The reason why I don't get it is because many of y'all send me videos. I thank God for y'all that send me videos every week. Sometimes y'all see me so many videos. One uh, other week, I'm looking at the videos and I'm standing in front of the camera, just a clown talking to videos. Think about it Thursday. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it Thursday. Think about it, right? And I look up, y'all, four hours went by. And I'm sitting in a clown. <laughs> right? Four hours of foolery went by in my life. So it's not that I'm an anti social media. I don't trust my time, it's too contagious. Do y'all know they're paying people hundred thousand dollars a year? For those y'all got Netflix, go watch a little show. It's good. it's on Netflix right now. It's called I think it's called a uh, Social Life or something. So it's about all the founders of Facebook and doing it, and they're talking about how they're paying them hundred thousand dollars a year to get you addicted to doing it, trying to put this button at the same place to make sure that if you hit refresh, it pops up at the same place. You can see something else, and it keeps you hooked. They, they, they said they paid us money. He said it's all online. They said we were working and we were creating it, and we got hooked. I'm telling y'all, man, please hit, please hit my heart. Most people are tripping and not receiving the things of God because they don't manage their time. Everybody say unmanaged time. Okay. I got to go number three. I'm sorry. Let me give you one right now. Everybody say, uh-oh. Uh -oh. Here comes number three. Uncontrollable tongue. Yeah, I thought I, I know it's going to get an uh-oh then. Everybody say, uncontrollable. uncontrollable. Uh, many people, uh, they control their walk. They control their twists. They control their edges. But you can't control... Your tongue. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Get out of there. Uh, uncontrollable tongue. You'd be surprised how many people tongue is uncontrollable. They'll taste like this. You made me say. You made me say. That's uncontrollable. Did nobody make you say? She gonna make me cuss her out. She gonna make you? No, that, 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 that's uncontrollable tongue. Let me tell you what the Bible said. I'm going to give y'all a couple scriptures. I'm going to start getting out of the way because I know y'all saw this about man me already. Here it is. Write scripture down. Proverbs 18, 6 and 7. A fool's lips enter into contention. Everybody say strife. That's what contention is. And it says, and his mouth calling for strokes. Now strokes in the, in, in the Greek actually means internal beating. Everybody say internal beating. So let's try to read the scripture again. A fool's lips enter into strife. That's contention. And his mouth calls for strokes. Internal beating. Y'all got that? Verse 7 says, 
A fool's mouth is his destruction. The Greek word for that means ruin. Everybody say ruin. And his lips are the snare. Snare means trap of his soul. Okay. Okay, y'all understand. Let me back it up. A fool's lips enter into condition. But I said, when a mouth, when a person's mouth is uncontrollable, they always going to have strife. They always going to be going through it. Because they can't control what they say. Oh, man, I, I hear somebody mad at me right now. Here's what, 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 I didn't call you a fool. But the Bible says, if you can't control your tongue, you're a fool. That's what the book says. Well, you can't tell me how to talk and when to talk. I'm just expressing how I feel. Oh, they in the room. Oh, I you. I did. You can't tell me how to talk, how to get mad. I'm just expressing how I feel. Y'all, the scripture. I'm gonna tell you what the Bible says. I'm gonna tell you this. Let me give this scripture. This scripture helps somebody. Somebody really want to get help. Here it is. I'm gonna read it to you until you get mad with me. I'm gonna try to read it and get out your way. Um, you know what? I don't even want to do that. You know what? Let me just. I'm just give you the scripture because I got it on my head. I want to give you a couple. Of them. Write this down. James one and nineteen. James one and nineteen. Let me tell you what it says. James one and nineteen says, uh, uh, "Let everyone be swift to hear, slow to speak." Hmm. Everybody say, "Slow your roll." That sounds so 96, don't it? Slow your roll, slow your roll. Back in the day, people going to talk crazy. See, we got a new generation now. People like, they can comment on everything, blog on everything, say what they want to say. Back in the day, they tell you that. Slow your roll, slow your roll. Slow, I mean, slow, do what the Bible say now. The Bible gave you two ears. You ought to be twice, you ought to listen twice as much as you speak. Be slow to speak. I gotta give you a scripture right quick because I want y'all mad at me. Y'all have heard it before. It's, it, I'm still in Proverbs 18. I just want to go from a set of verse 6 and 7. I'm gonna go down to verse 21. Y'all know what it says. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it, love to talk, uncontrollable, shall eat the fruit. Many of y'all reap what you sow because you talk so much. You sow in that mouth. And you wonder why they don't like it at a job. You always talking. Watch this, y'all. You love tearing people down, but you're expecting God to raise you up. Uncontrollable tongue. All right, y'all have more right quick. Nobody don't want to hear this. Look at somebody close to you. I need you to find at least two people and just say, you ain't got to say that. Go on, tell them. You got to think you can't see them. You see them. Look at them say, you ain't got to say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't slow down before you respond, that tongue of yours is out of control. I see more people fall into sin. And miss opportunities because they couldn't control their tongue. Let me give you one more scripture. Second Corinthians chapter two. Second, I'm sorry, Second Timothy chapter two, verse sixteen. But shun profane and vain babbling. Shun means stop. If I say stop, stop profane and vain babbling, for they will increase in more ungodliness. God, the, the Bible says that I'm control the tongue of yours. You gonna keep. You gonna keep showing that. Your tongue is making it why you can't live right. Sean, stop profane. Profane, y'all know profane me? Profanity. Why you just can't say I'm hungry? Vain battle. Vain battle. Vain battle are the things that Christians do. Vain. Vain means you, you think God don't know better that you can't stop it. You're doing it. You're saying it in vain. I'm hungry as hell. Why, why can't be hungry though? Why gotta be hungry as hell? That's vain battle. Girl, she was cute as hell. They, guys, that kind of talking, uncontrollable talking, it, it's, it's going it's to just have more, uh, it's going to have you more, more ungodliness. That's what the Bible says. Y'all see what it says? More ungodliness. Vain babbling. Compare everything to hell. How do y'all know that God ain't got no little name and his name ain't Lee? God! Lee, what, what are you talking about? Why do you say that? Some of y'all, let me come get y'all that, that, that think you say, uh, but you say these kid cuss words. I don't like them. I, and if you got a kid, do them. Start slapping them in the mouth now. Shoot. Shoot. What does shoot? What do you mean shoot? You ain't got no basketball. Darn. Freaking. Oh, no. Nah, oh, no. Nah, oh, no. Nah. You cussing. You cussing. And, and, and watch, here's what happens. Some of y'all can't say, man, because your kid's doing it because you can't control your tongue. So you have, you saying hallelujah in here. But you saying, 
the house. Uh, Uncle Joel was on. Please hear me y'all. Can I tell y'all this? I'm, let's just read the verse again. Here, we're gonna read verse. We're reading Second Timothy. Come on, online. You can read it. It's on screen. Second Timothy, chapter two, verse sixteen. Let's read it again. Look what it says. But Sean profane. I want y'all to read it. Let's read it. Come on. Here we go. But Sean profane and vain babblings, for they will increase on the more ungodly. If I say they will. God said, you ain't going to keep cussing and think you're going to get holier. Saying things you ain't got to say. Forget you then. Why, why, why do you have to say that? You don't want to forget the person that you love. Why are you talking like that? Because your tongue is uncontrollable. And God said, it's going to get worse. More ungodliness is coming. Not because you don't love God. It's because you got a what? Uncontrollable tongue. Saying stuff for no reason. Man, I don't even care no more. You do care. But you can't. You can't. Can't control your tongue. Saying stuff that's meaningless. It's whatever. You don't want that. You want your little job. Stop talking crazy. Stop it. For somebody to hear you say, oh, that, no, that's enough. No, no, no baby, baby, please. I'm going to talk to All right, I'm going to try again. What, what, that's, how many of this? Three? I'll get one more. I'll try to. Um, uh, how can I get some? Y'all get something? Y'all get something? Yeah. Here we go. Uh, and and, and I, I'm going to tell you right now, Spirit of the Lord, uh, at least we do this. Um, some of y'all, I know y'all looking for a lot of uh, a, a great uh, 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 things that you can relate to and things happen in our world. But I, I just hear God saying, get back to the Bible, man. Who cares what they like? The Bible is what they need. All right, here we go. Here's number four. Everybody say, uh-oh. Uh -oh. Here's another one. Uh, here it is. Please don't get mad at me. Uh, all right, here we go. Undecided authority. Undecided authority. Write that down. Everybody say this. Undecided, Undecided. Authority. authority. Now, this is extremely difficult for some people. Why? Because especially for those of y'all who struggle with authority since you were kids. Oh. I know this one to trip you up. Why? Because I, I had a problem with authority as a kid. Oh, I don't want to bother nobody. I know it's going to get in trouble. So, so the issue isn't just authority. It's the un undecided part. Y'all with me? Not just authority. We got there with the undecided part. Okay, nobody does this one. I'm saying. Let me give you a scripture. Write the scripture down. James 1 and 8 says, A double-minded man is unstable in what? All his ways. So hold on. You in love with somebody who can't decide if they are saint or ain't. If they're in love or in lust. And, and then you try to trust them. You try to trust her. I ain't mean to cuss you out. Just turn around and say, you know I love you and everything. And, and, and you think they're going to get great ways for you. Oh, Lord. Uh, uh, the Bible says uh, a double-minded man or an undecided man is unstable in all his ways. So if you're unstable and undivided in all your ways, you will definitely be undecided in who has authority. Hmm. I know it's going to get bad. Let me give y'all something right quick. Some statistics I'm going to do is just for the strength of it. Um, 67, write this down. 67.8% of America doesn't want to work for anybody. 67.8% of America don't want to work for anybody. Now, this isn't because 67.8% of America has a lucrative, a structured business plan that is just waiting on investors and shareholders. It's not because of that. It's not because of that. Uh, 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 I believe. Everybody say, I believe. I believe. I, I'm, I'm willing to bet. 65% of that 67.8% doesn't want to honor nobody's authority. Yeah, amen. Tired of listening to folk. Tired of folk telling me when to clock in. What? 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 And, and you're dreaming uh, of having your own business and somebody got to honor yours. Got undecided authority. Please sit me. I'm trying to help somebody. Many of you say you say and you're a child of God, but you don't live like a child of God. You're rebellious. Oh my God. You won't honor God's word. You only honor God's word when it's convenient. You only honor God's plan when it's convenient. You only honor God's authority when it's convenient to you. You treat God like it's a nail appointment, a half salon appointment, a little league football game. You schedule God. Then when you get in trouble, somebody's sick, somebody got an accident, then it's, oh Lord, I need your power. Now you want his authority. Authority over pain, authority over sickness and pride. See, see, then, but you, you got undecided authority. And you keep tripping, you keep missing the promise in your life because you got undecided authority. Let me take a step further. Can I take a step further? 
Mm. So, so, so you continue to struggle because you got undecided authority. Because, because you undecided with who's your authority. Oh my God, I don't want to do this. Y'all know, Pastor. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't need, uh, I don't need worship like that. Uh, I, I'll see you on YouTube. Uh, 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 I'm not comfortable in service. Um, okay. Uh, why you have them? Your nails done too. Oh Lord. Uh, why you see your children in school? Why did you go to the grocery store? You could have ordered the grocery. You could they they go they brought grocery shop for you now. Yep. Matter of fact, if you did do that, why did you even order that? You weren't uncomfortable with somebody riding and coughing on your little bag when they brought it to your house. Oh Lord, I can tell you the problem is that you, you you have a problem with undecided authority. You wish you wash it with your authority. I can't hear nobody now. And, and, and why do you constantly listen and counsel yourself? I can tell you why you go back and forth for a trip with yourself, talk to yourself, because you got undecided authority. You don't know how to go to God about it. You're going to go to you for it. And so what happens is, until you divorce you, you'll never get committed to God. I got to get out of there. God, y'all mad at me. Uh, why is committing to God always optional? Undecided authority. Please hear me. One time, Pastor Elijah was in the Bible. Let me find the scripture. One time, Pastor Elijah had some people that was wishy washy, undecided by God. Uh, look, look, look what he preached one day. Uh, I'm in 1 uh, Kings chapter 18, verse 20. Watch what he preached. He preached it, y'all. I didn't preach it. He, and Elijah came to all the people and said, How long have ye between two opinions? How long you be stuck between two opinions? I'm like, Sandy, man, no, I got real quiet right there. Uh, uh, if, if, if the Lord be God, y'all see that? If the Lord be God, do what? Follow him. But if Baal, that's somebody else, didn't follow him. He said, guess what? Just decide who you're going to follow. You got undecided authority. You listen to you today. Then when pain comes, you try to listen to God. What or who authority are you going to follow? Is it God or is it Google? Do y'all know we got Christians now that say they love Jesus? And will Google how they feel and never pray about how they feel. I don't, I, don't, I don't get an amen right here because some of y'all right now, uh, some of y'all, you could have come to church and you said, well, Pastor, I'm, I have you to call it, Pastor, well, you know, I had, to, I had to go to the hospital because I looked up and they said, they said when your pinky toe hurt, that you might get a, there's a, there's a, there's a 14 uh, point chance, chance that you might get a stroke, and then they say, and if the orange juice don't taste the same when you drink orange juice, they say, now, you know, you really could be, you know, really be having, you know, a terminal, and I'm saying, do you know if you read everything on Google? You'll be dead. They'll take you dying tomorrow. You're finna die. Could they do anything for a click? The internet has information people put in it. And you'll, you'll Google how you feel and don't play about how you feel. You got undecided authority. Oh. Don't think I'm mad at me, God. I'm just trying to do what you said. All I'm saying is you need to decide what authority is in your life. Even with me. I'm going to be real with you. I'm never boost by being no pastor. I'm a pastor. I got to tell you what the Bible says. I understand we got virtual watchers now, people online, we got people out sick, we got people even in the place. But I can tell you right now, many of you, many of you, you want God, but, but if I'm really your pastor, the Bible says you need to honor where God leads me. Yes. Okay, let me come another way. Oh, 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 oh. I asked us for, for three weeks to go on a fast because I believe that too many of us are not having authority over our flesh. And many of you ain't even thought about it. Others you conveniently didn't know. But you never want to know what God's plan is for your life. You never want to know what's happening in the church. You, it, it, it's because you got undecided authority. All right, let me give you a scripture. I'll give you a scripture. I, I ain't never, I only do this kind of stuff. Scripture, I'm going to show it to what the Bible says about evil in ministry. It is Hebrews 13, 17. Here's what it says. It says, obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourself. Everybody say, submit yourself. For they watch for your souls as they will as they that must give an account. See, as a pastor, God, I must give an account. So I ain't, I gotta be here. I gotta trust God. If you feel like it, if you choose to, you want to stay home. I gotta give an account to God no matter what. But the Bible says that they may do it with joy and not with grief. What the Bible says, y'all see this? For that is what for you, unprofitable for you, not for your neighbor. For you, I'm not, I'm not trying to, 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 to be rude to you, but, but go somewhere or another place where you can honor them. Or just seriously make God your authority and he'll lead you to the right ministry. But the problem, I know it's quiet, I know it's quiet now. The problem, the problem is, but you, you got so much undecided authority. Who's the voice in your life? Let me come another way. When I say you got undecided authority, it means that you don't have a real spiritual residence. 
So if God has a special Amazon Prime package to send to you, a blessing to come to you, many times you're missing your blessing because you got undecided authority and you ain't got no address spiritually. And then you're mad with God. God said, I, I, my word is true. My word, just honor the word. The last scripture, I'm going, here it is, write the scripture down, Joshua 24 and 15, I'm out of the door, here it is, and if it seems evil unto you, I mean, you don't know a pastor right who lied uh, to the servant of the Lord, it says, choose you this day, like today, just, just make a decision, decide what side you're going to be on, do you know the Bible says, over rebuke is better than secret love, it says, if you just decide to be all the way wrong, then I'll show you that you're wrong and point you in the right direction. But many of you, you selective with your authority. You undecided. You want God today. You want Google tomorrow. You want yourself the next day. And God said, because you're so unstable, everything going to be unstable. All your ways. So watch this here. I tell every woman, every man, if that man and that woman ain't, uh, ain't stable with God, I'm telling you, I do love God. I don't really like church like that. How are you going to trust that? They already telling you. The Bible says I'm double-minded. I like everything. If I say hope poke. I don't need no hope poke for the bar. I have one foot in, one foot out. And whoever was connecting me was going to get what? It didn't matter what church I went to. And no matter when I went, as soon as I went there, they know that I, I hey, y'all, I'm going to see you next week. But they knew I was really. One foot in, undecided authority. And many of you don't understand. On the side of the old folk call this straddling the fence. Right? Now, now, now I, I'm not saying that I'm trying to be old. I'm just trying to tell you, man, God said, hold on. I can't tell what side you're on. If, 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 if you trust me, you stand on my word and, and, and wait till, I, till you receive the blessings and the promises of God. If you're off and you're not saved, you don't know me, then guess what God says? I can lie, I can lead and guide you because I, I can show you the way. Many of y'all here today, because you was lost, God found you. Yeah. Found you through somebody. You thought you came to church because you was in love. You moved up. God orchestrated stuff so you can get to him. Yeah. So you can decide on him. Yeah. Notice God didn't say he going to force himself on you. You got to decide the authority. And when you struggle with undecided authority, please hear me, uh, undecided authority, if you struggle with undecided authority, what ends up happening is... Then you don't know who to trust. Let me prove it to you. We got undecided authority. You start saying, well, um, we got so much chemistry. Uh, uh, you know last time you felt chemistry? What happened in that relationship? Mm -hmm. look, look, you, 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 you're trying to go off how you feel. And, and I know they say, listen to your heart. Now you listen to God. And at some point, if I say some point, at some point, you just got to decide what side you're going to be on. See, when I was growing up, it was real clear. It was real clear. People talk like this. Like, like, I don't know if y'all remember uh, 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 back in the day, uh, we didn't have these uh, dual friends. Well, I'm a social with her, but I'm friends with you. We had that growing up. You had to decide. You my friend or they us? Y'all remember that? You with him or me? Now we're saying, you know, just depends on how you look at it, Pastor. You got undecided authority. And God said, I'm going to be God when you get through. When you get through it all, you're trying to figure it out, I'm still going to be God. Yes. And you got to decide on his authority. Because please hear me. Listen, I, I gave you the scripture earlier. But I'm going to give it to you again. I know you ain't going to like it. But I, I just got to give it to you because I know it's the right thing to do. Here it is. I'm going to go all the way back to Hosea 4 and 6. My people, saved people, are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That ain't the bad news. The bad news is because thou has rejected knowledge. I will, not might. I'm true to my word. You ain't gonna switch out on me and I don't do the same. Now, that sounds very hard. Sounds like God's not loving. God says, hey, we're not talking about the people that don't know me. See, it's like a child who know you don't play by that. And they keep what? Trying you. Keep trying you. Keep trying you. Keep trying. How many of y'all know some kids that keep trying you till you show them who the authority is? Then you let them decide. And God is telling some people right now, listen, don't go through this year, 2022, with undecided authority. Decide what words you're going to honor. I know we got this new generation now. I know everybody's, I know everybody's now uh, 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 seeking new words. Everybody going to 100 lives. Everybody got 100 pastors and preachers that they listen to. Please hear what I'm saying. 
I'm never going to knock anybody who's trying to seek God's word. But the problem is you're not deep enough in your ministry and know the doctrine of your ministry. So you can be tossed and fro. You go to listen to some other stuff and it's not going to what God has given you. And God gave you a pastor. You got to be careful about listening to stuff that's not sound doctrine. And everything's telling you that your life is going to be full of sweet potato pie and key lime and cheesecake. Like you got to be careful. A doctrine is not telling you that you got to line up to God's word. You got to be committed because I'm telling you right now. You can't call nobody on YouTube and tell them to pray for you. You got to seek God. You got to find yourself. And so, I, I, I mean, it's so bad because I, I, I hate that we're in the world now. Well, now if Dr. Foster don't say it, we don't believe it. What happened to us? Do y'all know people still dying of cancer? Do you know you can die from other stuff? Do you know I just had to talk to a kid who, who could die and the mom said that, that uh, she, here she is trying to uh, hold a uh, baby and the, and the boy in the back seat flew out the window. And the mask won't matter. And the cold won't matter. You got to decide if I'm going to live my life under the authority of God and trust God. Do you know if your child go to act in a donkey that the hand sanitizer won't help you? You need God. You need the authority and the power of God to touch your child. I'm telling you, I'm talking real stuff. I'm talking, I've seen people, I've seen God work, work miracles in two people's lives to, to, to now go through another year saying, I don't know, let's wait to see they're going to say, I'm not going to get my boost and then I'm going to, I'm talking to the pastor that's, do you know the booster shot only lasts between 10 and 15 weeks? What is going to happen on week 16? You got to trust God. Alright. Everybody say stop tripping. All right, my time here is God praise on this door. Jesus. All right, I'm gonna do more uh, later. Uh, I just, I just can't, I can't do it right at this moment. Uh, I need everybody right now. If you can, if you're a giver online, if you're a giver, you're a giver online. I need everybody, y'all can. This year, we got a lot of great things we're trying to do. Uh, we're trying to help more people. We're trying to do more things, even uh, uh, in our own uh, ministry, even with those of us on the place. For those of y'all don't know this, uh, uh, we often uh, 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 just pick somebody online and bless them just for. Uh, Lessons. And so we, we try to do a lot of things to try to help people. But I'm asking everybody if you can today, please stretch yourself this year. Uh, certainly, um, we know that everything's going up. Uh, uh, even wages are going up. But I'm asking us um, to, to go a little further, stretch ourselves more with our time. Many of you give. We thank God for giving. We're going to ask you now to start following all of God's word. The Bible says tithe and offering. Some of you, I tell you all the time, sometimes you got to start off giving. You got to give. Um, um, people start off giving occasionally. Then you have to learn how to start giving consistently. But then ultimately, the ultimate goal is just following his word. Yeah. Yeah. Trusting it. Some of y'all, man, you been, how many more scratch offs you gonna get? Come on, how many more lotto tickets you gonna get? I mean, how many more uh, we're gonna drink tonight? We're like, like, baby, yo, just trust God with your uh entertainment bill. Hmm. The food ain't gonna be good. You gotta start trusting God this year. I believe that this is a year of promise. I'm telling you, we can receive the promises of God, but please make sure, please make sure, please hear me, please make sure, everybody online, please make sure, everybody here, please make sure, please, everybody in my heart, everybody please hear me, please make sure you hold up your promises to God. Gotta stop, man. Some of online, we got too casual, just telling God, I promise, Lord, I promise. And God said, you, you, you remember that day? 2022, I'm coming to get that promise. Are y'all hearing me? All right, let's all stand. Amen. You can give online again. We thank God for everyone giving. We thank God for everybody here today. Don't forget, we are in a series right now. Tell your friend, tag, text, uh, tell somebody that uh, please watch us on the uh, uh, Stop Tripping series. We're going to be going through this until whenever God says uh, any different. For those y'all not feeling well, I thank God for y'all uh, who pressure away. For those who are not feeling well, we all thank God for you. You feel good. Amen. We thank God for those who feel all right. Amen. Clap it all. You feel all right? Amen. But I want to encourage everybody uh, to keep pressing that way. Um, to, um, and um, um, again, um, I, I believe in God for great things with all of us. Um, again, um, when I said, oh, we want to remember, uh, oh, don't forget, on uh, next week, on uh, Monday, uh, we will not be uh, participating in a little pray that I said we're going to be doing. Um, I want us to kind of come together on some other things that I want to do. Um, again, um, um, I want to dive into more of these um, in Bible Lab this Wednesday. If you've been able to please come, I want to dive into a little more. I know some of y'all may have some questions. Those y'all line of questions. Make sure you come and ask everybody this year to commit. Don't forget, y'all, it's 168 hours in a week. And I'm asking you, what are you doing? If, if the church can only take three of them, give God at least the three. 
He let you get your job. What are you going to do? I talked to a lady right now. I don't want to break her name up. I'm going to pray to God. She's watching. Uh, she said, why did it take for me to be in this hospital bed? She got pneumonia and something. And I'm not saying it in a negative negative way. So now, in, now my time and God matters. Come on, man. We don't want that. We don't want that. We don't want that. All right. If all minds are hospital, we look to the Lord. Look to my host. I'm glad you're with me. I'm glad you're with me today. I'm glad you're with me today. Say, the word of Jesus is hard. The word of Jesus is close. Tell him. Yeah, he's the hard because you're close to me. Amen. 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 All right, let's pray. Not on him who's able to keep us from falling. Not on him who's able to do exceedingly and abundant of all we ask a thing through the power of work for us. God, we thank you today. We lift you up, God. God, we thank you now, God. Somebody's giving you a special blessing, God. They're trusting you, God. They're giving you more. They're expecting more from you, God. They're trusting you, God, with extra blessing now, God. Bless those gifts, God. Bless those times, God. Somebody already gave, God. Somebody already gave, and somebody's already going to give more, God. Bless them now, God, even where they are, God. We ask you now, God, for a special touch, God. For those somebody's dealing with something that body, God. They're confused, God. They don't know how to trust you, God, with a cold and a flu, God. They're worried about stuff. They're grooving stuff. But God, we bless you. We trust you now, God. We stay on your word, God. We know you're still able. We know you still can. God, we, we still know that by your stripes that we are already healed. So now, God, we trust you. We stand on your word, God. And for those, God, that are unhealthy, they're sick, God, with their commitment, God, bless them, God. Restore them, revive them, renew them, God, right now in the name of Jesus. Now, God, dismiss us from this place. Dismiss us from this life until we meet again. We'll be so careful to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. Smile, give your head up and shout. It's already done. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, before you get out of here, look at somebody. Find somebody. You don't want to hug them, elbow them, touch them, and just tell them, guess what? Stop tripping. Stop tripping. Stop tripping. Stop tripping. Stop tripping. Stop tripping.